Hello, I'm Pete Williams in for Gwen Eiffel, and this is the Washington Week Extra. Phil, I want to start you with something that we didn't get to during the broadcast, a name that we haven't heard much in this campaign nationally, Evan McMullen. Who is he and why might he make a difference? Well, he's an independent candidate for president. He's actually a Republican. Uh, he's 40 years old, former CIA operative and, and congressional staffer. Nobody really knows who he is, but he's, he's from Utah, born there, and he's really trying to win that state, uh, that single state. It's a state where Donald Trump is struggling mightily. Uh, Mitt Romney won it 73 percent to 25 percent in 2012, and yet Trump is, is either tied or losing right now in the polls. Oh, McMullen thinks if he can win in Utah, somehow deny either Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump the majority in the Electoral College vote, through the 12th Amendment, he can kick the results over to the uh, to the, the Congress, and maybe he could get elected president that way. The 12th Amendment, as loyal viewers of the show would know, is the <laughs> one that says if there's no if nobody has a majority in the Electoral College, then the House decides who the president is. That's the one you're. That's talking exactly about. right. But uh, why is he so popular in Utah, or perhaps the inverse is why is Trump so unpopular in Utah? Well, McMullen is popular in Utah because his name is not Donald Trump. I mean, he he's he's somebody different. He's a conservative. Uh, he gives Republicans in Utah who are very uneasy with Trump, especially uh, Mormons there who, who just cannot handle some of the uh, vulgarity that comes from Trump's campaign, gives them an option, somebody other than Hillary Clinton to vote for. Uh, he's, he, McMullen really came out of the Never Trump movement. Uh, he's funded by a lot of Never Trump donors. Uh, Bill Kristol, the editor of the Weekly Standard, who's been an, a critic of Trump's, has really recruited him and groomed him as a candidate. Could he win Utah, Gene, and could he win any other state? No, he can't win any other state, but he can win Utah. I mean, he is a Mormon. He went to Brigham Young University. He reflects the values. I think that the level of Mormon uh, participation or uh, Voter registration stages like in the 70s or uh, low 70s. Um, so he's one of them. He reflects their values. Their values matter to them. Utah is the state with the highest um, percentage of people who go to church every week. So he's tailor made for them. And many of those voters, they can't do Trump and they just can't do uh, Hillary either. Although Hillary camp her campaign's trying. Um, <laughs> They do have a little rump group up there trying to stir up some support for her and maybe steal one. But I think that this is it. And that, that would be the first time a third party candidate won a state since 1968. How many electoral votes? Six. It's two more so, than New Hampshire. Someone okay. described it to me as a civilized protest vote. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's a good uh, That's beautiful. Jeff, I want to ask you about uh, Bloomberg. It's out with an interesting new poll of likely Republican voters about who they see as the future of the party. They were asked, who do you want to be the face of the party nationally? 27% said Mike Pence. Trump was at 24, followed by Ted Cruz, Paul Ryan, and John Kasich. So if Trump doesn't win the election, what does this say about his future in the Republican Party? Is there one? I think very, very limited future in the Republican Party. I mean, basically, there will be a free-for-all after the election on November um, 9th, the morning after, inside the Republican Party. The divisions will exist until someone heals them. Um, Mike Pence is at the top of the list here at 27 percent in the Bloomberg poll. He has had this high wire act really for the last uh, several months to you know, be a loyal uh, vice presidential candidate but not stray from his principles as a potential uh, 2020 presidential uh, candidate. And I think overall he's done better than most people in his position would be able to. He's had a few places where you know, he's cleaned up and he's had to you know, um, sort of change his answer to, f uh, to fit what Donald Trump said. But look, I think that Mike Pence will emerge as the you know, heir apparent, I guess, with the, the leader of the National Party for a moment. But boy, once the congressional session begins again in January, Paul Ryan will be very visible, Speaker Ryan. Now, he has potential trouble on his right flank here because some conservatives in the House, a, a rabble-rousing group to be sure, um, uh, say that they will challenge him uh, for his speakership. Uh, Mark Meadows, the uh, congressman who gave John Boehner uh, a hard time, is saying he'll challenge him. But what this shows is the Republican Party will be leaderless. Uh, Mike Pence will be the um, leader, but not standing very tall. And of course, who knows what Donald Trump wants to do. Right. Uh, we said during the, um, uh, the broadcast uh, uh, that uh, Donald Trump ha had uh, a lot of people watching the debate. And we noticed this week that uh, the 8 million people were watching the, the debate on Donald, a Donald Trump Facebook page. So 
Could his future be on some kind of television channel, do you think? Is that maybe something he's thinking about? That, it is something that they are thinking about. Um, his son-in-law met recently with one of the biggest investors in these kinds of startup, new channel, television networks. So we know it's an option that they've kicked around inside um, when they've thought about the future. Uh, it makes a lot of sense. He, his good friend Roger Ailes from Fox, recently departed from Fo Fox News with no doubt a grudge, wouldn't mind probably starting up another channel. He's he, still on Rupert Murdoch's payroll, isn't he? Well, that doesn't mean over, you know, a ham sandwich in <laughs> Mar-a-Lago, there can't be conversations <laughs> between friends, and Roger Ailes has successfully done this before. So, uh, you know, it's, it seems a natural fit. I, oh, it's funny, when he got in the campaign in last August, all he talked about was ratings. That's all he talked about for like a month and a half. And at that time I thought, maybe he just is after a career course correction, because he's done with The Apprentice, and, but he, all he talks about is ratings, maybe he wants a show, you know, maybe he wants like a show on Fox, or what I was thinking at the time, not an independent network. But um, it would be a natural play for him. <laughs> he has really built his empire by yeah. leveraging his brand yes. uh, to make profit. Mm -hmm. And no better way to leverage the presidential race after he loses, if he loses, uh, than to create a network. Well, during the broadcast, we noted that the speeches at the Al Smith dinner were unusually stinging this year. But there were some lines, to be fair, that got big laughs. The media is even more biased this year than ever before, ever. Michelle Obama gives a speech, and everyone loves it. It's fantastic. My wife, Melania, gives the exact same speech. <laughs> and people get on her case. People say, and I hear them, I know, they say, I'm boring compared to Donald. But I'm not boring at all. In fact, I'm the life of every party I attend, and I've been to three. <laughs> so, Gene, did either of them show that they have what it takes to be the comedian-in-chief for those times when we call upon the president to make us laugh? Well, I think tone is important, and knowing your audience is important, and I don't think Donald met that, that, those standards very well. I was a little surprised that Hillary Clinton showed a little sense of timing. She seemed pretty relaxed. Um, she is uptight, and then that's just her way. She does sweat the details, as she says. So I think, you know, she did arguably better for the night, but um, I don't think that's what many voters will base their vote on, so. I went back to look at a, uh, uh, some of reels of the, of the previous speeches to do a story for the broadcast last night and was struck by how funny George W. Bush was and yeah. Al Gore was, and they and talked at one another. And Mitt Romney, certainly in 2012, without question, John McCain, very funny, and self-deprecating. I think that's one thing that was really missing yeah. from last night. Not much self-deprecation at all, uh, really from either side, but certainly from Donald Trump's side. And making fun of uh, Melania there, making her the butt of the joke. Yeah. I don't know. Well, that's, Hillary that's, Clinton that's, had the funny line about that how great, grateful they should all be because normally she charges a lot of money to give speeches <laughs> like this. That, Everybody made that true. joke there, right. I think. Right. Right. Well, thank you all. Uh, when you're online, check out the Washington Week weekly news quiz to check your knowledge of current events in the news. That's, of course, at pbs.org slash Washington Week. I'm Pete Williams for all of us here. Good night.